I tried beating Terraria, but I have the ability to upgrade weapons. Using these very special weapon tokens, we can make a simple bow go from this all the way to this. Will I be able to upgrade the most garbage of weapons to make them overpowered and defeat Moonlord with a copper short sword? Well, let's find out. I spawned in, opened up my loot bag, and the very first thing I went to do was chop down trees. Essentially, how the weapon upgrade works is we have to get a very special NPC to spawn in, so we are going to focus on building houses, and for every boss we defeat, we actually get a set amount of tokens which we can use to upgrade our weapons. The more we want to upgrade them, the more they cost, so this isn't completely broken, and along with this, the further we make it into the game, the more we can actually upgrade the weapons. As soon as I had enough wood, I started building myself a house and upon exploring an ice cave I actually managed to get myself the ice blade. This is gonna come in handy later and it's probably going to be the very first weapon I'm going to try and upgrade. I got myself some life crystals and upon coming back to spawn I chopped down more trees and started work on a elevator. As soon as I came back to spawn I crafted myself the Louis AFK prison builder and built a bunch of NPC houses. I waited for some NPCs to move in and then after this I ventured over to the left side of the world past the desert biome and managed to to reach the edge of the world. There was nothing really fascinating here, so I came back to spawn and then ventured over to the right, in which I found myself a corruption biome. I chucked some bombs at the orbs in order to get myself the meteorite to spawn in, and upon coming back to spawn, we actually got the main NPC of this mod to move in, and he was named Equipmentino with 1337 health. He apparently doesn't like the goblin tinker, and we now have the ability to actually upgrade our items. In order to get upgrades, we're gonna have to start challenging some bosses, so that's exactly what I sought out to do. The first thing I did is went over to the corruption, chucked some bombs at the orbs, since I had copper armor and the ice blade, I genuinely thought I was ready, so I summoned him in, and to no one's surprise, I got absolutely obliterated. I did manage to get myself enough shadow scales and demonite to craft myself a nightmare pickaxe, so I came back to spawn and continued digging my elevator even faster than before. I looted some chests while trying to dig the elevator. I managed to find myself another ice blade. While digging out the elevator, I also got myself some obsidian. And once I reached the underworld, I tried to get myself as much hellstone as I could, but this didn't really go too well because I didn't have any obsidian skin potions and I didn't have a lava charm. So it was very annoying to do and I didn't get much hellstone in the process. Upon coming back to spawn, I crafted myself a fiery greatsword. And then I ventured back over to the corruption in order to try and defeat the Eater of Worlds once more. We broke the orbs, summoned him in, and we actually managed to defeat him this time. This boss ended up dropping some upgrade charms so we can actually start upgrading our weapons. And the very first weapon I upgraded was the Vile Thorn. I had three tokens, so I upgraded two different weapons. And honestly, from this much of an upgrade, you could barely see a noticeable difference. These weapons only did like two more damage and it was kind of pathetic. But I kept my chin up and tried to grind out more more bosses to upgrade them even further. I wasn't gonna give up this easily yet, boyos. Keyword, yet. I went back down to the underworld in order to get more hellstone. I got myself a guide voodoo doll during this process. I got myself full hellstone armor and a molten pickaxe. I went back over to the corruption in order to craft myself the suspicious looking eye so we could summon in the eye of Cthulhu. And upon coming back to spawn, I tried to use the vile thorn to take out the eye of Cthulhu, but progress was extremely slow, so I whipped out my fiery greatsword and tried to take out the Eye of Cthulhu with that. I then later tried to use the Balo Hurt, which I also upgraded, and I can kind of tell that it did more damage, but it was still very weak. We took out the Eye of Cthulhu, got some upgrade tokens, and using these, I upgraded the Vile Thorn even more, making it far faster and do more damage. After this, I went over to Skeletron's dungeon in order to defeat Skeletron, and using the Fiery Greatsword and the Balo Hurt, we took him out quite easily, letting us now enter his dungeon without getting obliterated by the Guardians. After defeating Skeletron, I also got some upgrade tokens, so that was pretty nice, and they will come in handy a little bit later, but for now, my main goal was to get myself a bunch of water candles and get the Muramasa. Upon coming back to spawn, I upgraded my Balo Hurt once more using my upgrade tokens, and then built myself more NPC houses. I later built myself an arena and started farming out Eyes of Cthulhu in order to grind out a bunch of upgrade tokens so I could make my weapons more powerful before actually going into hard mode. This process lasted a very, very long time and I killed many bosses in order to get myself hundreds of tokens. 
I also managed to fight the King Slime and get absolutely obliterated by him during this time. And after challenging even more Eyes of Cthulhu and getting more and more upgrade tokens, I upgraded the Blue Moon, which was another flail weapon, as well as the Fiery Greatsword. Now boyos, there was a secret setting on this mod that would make the upgrades far more overpowered. I frankly got bored of playing fair, so I turned this on, making all of my weapons absolutely insane. Check out how fast we could swing the Muramasa for example and the Fiery Greatsword after upgrading them. I kind of like it this way, so we're going to keep it as is. I went over to the jungle in order to get myself some stingers and jungle spores so we can craft the Blade of Grass. And also check out what happens once we shoot the Blue Moon in the middle of the sky. It kind of just doesn't come back if it doesn't hit anything, like this is how much the range has increased for this weapon and it goes through blocks, destroying everything in its path. Upon coming back to spawn, I crafted myself the Blade of Grass and then I went over to the Corruption to make myself the Knight's Edge. Of course, I had to upgrade that, and then I also upgraded my Imp Staff, making it deal crazy amounts of damage and making the Imp really stupidly fast. And you know, I could not go without upgrading my Pickaxe so we can mine like absolute lunatics. After this, I went over to the Cavern in order to farm out Life Crystals, and upon coming back to spawn, I summoned in more Eyes of Cthulhu to get myself even more upgrade tokens, and using a bunch of various weapons such as the Magic Missile, the Ice Blade, the Book of Skulls, we took out all of these eyeballs, and the most fun weapon to use was probably the Vile Thorn. It shot out a bunch of projectiles everywhere and just demolished all the bosses. It kind of looked like a calamity weapon, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, these weapons were lots of fun to use. And once all the Eyes of Cthulhu were defeated, I went to upgrade even more random weapons, such as this Crimson Rod, the Malice Yo Yo. And then after this, I had a calling for the Star Fury. I went out of my way to find it and upgrade it, turning it essentially into the Star Wrath. This was very overpowered, I know but even more fun to use. We later got invaded by goblins, and using a bunch of various different weapons, we cleared out the goblin invasion, leaving us with only one thing to do. That is, fight Wall of Flesh. I went down to the underworld, built myself a long arena, buffed up, chucked the guide voodoo doll into the lava, and then using a copper broadsword, I tried to take out the Wall of Flesh. Along with this, I spammed it with my copper bow, and once I got bored of dealing no damage, I whipped out the Star Fury and tried to take it out with that. I came back to my copper bow and finally took it out using the same old bow that we started with. I picked up all the loot and headed straight over to the corruption. I broke a bunch of demon altars, blessing our world with cobalt or calcum and titanium. And after this, I started the same old pickaxe progression that you guys know and love. I got myself a cobalt pickaxe first, then made myself an aura calcum anvil as well as an aura calcum pickaxe. And after that, I went to go mine out titanium. I made myself a titanium repeater and then went back over to the caverns in order to get even more titanium. I wanted to make myself a full set of titanium armor before fighting the mech bosses, and frankly, physical labor was the only way to do that. Once I had gotten enough titanium, I crafted myself a titanium trident, full titanium armor, a titanium sword, and of course, I upgraded them all, making them absolutely overpowered. Check out how the titanium trident looked like, bro. Th this thing looks hilarious. I, I don't know what is up with this. I don't know why it's so funny, but I love the way this looks. After this, I went to go get my Myself a pair of wings, so I went over to the nearest Sky Island and using the titanium trident, we tried to farm out wyverns. I also managed to get myself a giant harpy feather, and upon coming back to spawn, I crafted myself a pair of harpy wings. You guys of course by now should know my love for harpy wings, just as you guys should know my love for each and every single one of the people that subscribe to the channel. So if you want my love, I recommend you press that button. After this, I went down to the hallowed caverns in order to farm out souls of light, and then once I got enough souls of light, I went over to the underground corruption and farmed out souls of night. As I came back to spawn, I crafted the mechanical worm and once it turned to nighttime, I summoned in the destroyer. Using the titanium trident and the titanium sword, I got very cocky and dove headfirst into the destroyer, which inevitably absolutely demolished me. I decided to fight the twins instead, so using the upgraded titanium repeater, we absolutely shredded through both of the twins. Of course, I took out spasmatism first and left retinazer for last, and once we took out the twins, I summoned 
Dungeon the Destroyer once more, and took him out using Juster's Arrows and the Titanium Repeater. Oh sweet revenge. Using the Hallowed Bars I crafted myself 5 Light Discs and I went out of my way to upgrade them. I made a summon for Skeletron Prime, and once it turned to night time I summoned them in. Thinking that the Light Disc would actually do decent damage, I spammed him with the Light Disc, and to my surprise the Light Disc was absolutely garbage, so I had to whip out my Titanium Repeater and defeat him with that. The jungle now grows restless, meaning we can now go and fight Salad Boss. I made myself the Pickaxe Axe, and before heading over to the jungle, I tried to use the Star Fury to see how well it would do against the Destroyer. Since the stars actually pierce all of its segments, it did fairly alright. The damage output was quite good, almost that as of a hard mode weapon. After this, I upgraded the Ice Blade, and then tried to take out the Destroyer using the Ice Blade. I thought this would be far better, but apparently the shots don't pierce the boss, so it made it quite garbage. I crafted myself an Excalibur, and then went over to the jungle. I killed a couple of turtles, picked up a bunch of Chlorophyte, and while in the jungle, I found myself a Staff of Regrowth, giving me the 200 IQ idea of trying to upgrade it and seeing how well it does against bosses. I located myself Plantera's Bulb, and while in the jungle, I actually wanted to defeat as many bosses as I could, so I went over to fight the Queen Bee, and using the Crimson Cloud, we dealt a hefty amount of damage to her before finishing her off with the Titanium Repeater. The bottom right of the screen was actually Plantera's Bulb, which I failed to notice, but once I realized that it was there, I dug out a massive arena, placed down a couple of platforms, upgraded the Beekeeper once I came back to spawn, made myself a Chlorophyte Sword and a Chlorophyte Shot Bow, and I went over to Plantera's Bulb in order to take out Salad Boss. And using the upgraded Chlorophyte Shot Bow, we absolutely wrecked Plantera, making us now officially able to end enter Golem's Temple. Upon coming back to spawn, I upgraded the grenade launcher, bought myself a ton of rockets, and went over to bully Golem. I picked up some lizard power cells from the chests within his temple, I built myself a tiny arena near his altar, and then absolutely demolished him using the grenade launcher. On our very first defeat of Golem, we actually managed to get a Pixaw, so that was pretty neat, and I broke his altar, took it back to spawn, and fought him there a couple more times. Upon bullying Golem even more, I got myself this Earth staff, and of course I upgraded both of them, I crafted myself full beetle armor, and then I also got myself a heat ray from golem, that essentially turned into a laser beam, but it drained our mana like crazy. I crafted myself a mana flower, bought myself a bunch of mana potions, and went over to fight the lunatic cultist. I tried to use the heat ray to deal damage to this boss, but apparently this weapon was pure garbage, and even though it was essentially an insta kill laser, it dealt no damage to the boss, making us resort to the good old trustworthy possessed hatchet. This weapon was absolutely absurd. Check this out, look how many hatchets there are on screen, and also take a peek at how quickly the lunatic cultist's health goes down once I whip this out. This weapon was absolutely devastating, and it made very quick work of the lunatic cultist. After the lunatic cultist was defeated, I went straight over to take out the solar pillar, and we actually managed to do it very very quickly. I made myself the solar eruption, and upon upgrading it, nothing happened. It literally didn't turn any better, it just dealt a bunch more damage. So it was kind of boring to use, and I just decided to stick to the possessed hatchet. I went over to take out the stardust pillar next, and upon taking that out, I took out the vortex pillar as well, and as I came back to spawn, I crafted myself the phantasm bow, made myself the stardust dragon staff, and of course, I upgraded both of them. The stardust dragon staff just became far faster, and the phantasm barely got any good upgrades either. For the very final showdown, I decided to get myself as many upgrade tokens as I could. I whipped out my copper short sword, and got myself a copper bow. I wasn't kidding when I said we're gonna try to take out Moolah with the copper short sword, and I'm really going to give this my all. I summoned in the destroyer a couple more times. In order to grind out even more upgrade tokens, I killed a bunch of Eyes of Cthulhu. Overall, just farmed out and grinded out tons of bosses, and once I had hundreds, if not thousands of upgrade tokens, I spent them all upgrading the copper short sword and the copper bow. Our copper bow now deals 25 damage and is extremely rapid fire, and our copper short sword deals 41 melee damage. I bought myself a bunch of buff potions, went to take out the nebula pillar, and as soon as we did that, we came back to spawn, built ourselves a tiny little hut from the lasers, and then before I even knew what happened, Moon Lord spawned in, so I quickly took out my copper bow and started spamming his eyeballs with that. I tried to use my copper short sword, but frankly I couldn't reach his arms, and I very rarely got the opportunity to actually hit him with the short sword. Using the copper bow, we took out all three of his eyes, leaving us with his Core. Of course, since now I could actually deal some damage using my copper short sword, I pulled that out and took out Moonlord with the copper short sword. 
I know this was a little bit of a cheesy video, but it was still very fun to do. Be sure to check out another video like this on screen. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. This has been Boyo. Peace out.